If you are that woman who had an issue of blood, will you have managed to touch the very hem of his garment? That tells us when we call Jesus and we want him to touch us, then we don't mind about who is around us or who is listening to me or what people will say. My concern is Jesus to speak a word to my life. That's where we are this morning. If you had a chance, there are many who are following Jesus but they were not healed that day. But this woman purpose that she would receive something that they would have fellowship with the Lord. Call on Jesus this morning. Your issues no one can solve. Not even a government. Not even your family. Only Jesus.
just not receiving their miracles. Just because they don't want to leave their voices and to call on him who is the only one who can save us. Oh, Yeshua! Yeshua! solution of nations is an increasing measure. It's a blessing that blesses as Abraham was promised. It is the victory that ensures more victory. And it is the peace that prevails and passes all understanding because it is the peace of an increasing measure. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Let's read. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think, think about such things, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. The increasing measure speaks like Paul of old, rejoice and again rejoice. Joy and joy, peace and peace, strength and strength, favor upon favor, victory upon victory, measure after increasing measure. This is the increasing measure that shall guard our hearts and minds. And following you see Paul describe things of increasing measure, that they are lovely, admirable, excellent and praiseworthy. This year says we shall go from one measure of lovely things to even lovelier things. From admirable things to more admirable things. From excellent to greater excellence. And from praiseworthy to more praiseworthy. And why is this possible? Is it indeed because we have received a good and goodly inheritance? We have been bequeathed from the Father of lights with whom there's no shadow of turning. He who gives gifts and who gives grace. James chapter one, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Psalms 85, verse 12. The Lord will indeed provide what is good, and our land will yield its increase. So if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Matthew 7, 11. How much more will the good Father give good things to they who ask those who ask in the morning and in the noontime and in the evening and in the night, fret not, be anxious of nothing. Church, there is increase singing within your bones. Victory is bound up like a fire inside your bones. And even the dead ones ache for another victory. And for this reason, the value of dry bones shall live again. They have joy left to rejoice. They have plunder left to divide. Death is not a final fall in the face of the increasing measure. Death is crushed by the increasing measure. Where the increasing measure is, death is not final. Increasing measure causes a dead womb of Sarah to give birth because there is increase that must bless the nations. What am I simply saying? I am simply saying and repeating that death cannot be final where the increasing measure is found. The increasing measure is such a measure of faith that even what is dead lives again. The seed that falls and dies yields a harvest. Death is not the end of the story where the increasing measure is found. Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, dry bones. 
Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I'll make breath enter into you, and you will come to life. I'll attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I'll put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I was, and I was, as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Verse nine. Then he said to me, "Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it." This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into this lane that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army. Verse 11. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will set you in, a, in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Eternity we are being asked, shall these bones live again? The increasing measure is asking, will these bones live again? We have come to prophesy to the dry bones, the unfulfilled dreams, the undone miracles, the ministries that were not bathed, the dry bones, I hear a rattling sound. The wind of increasing measure, the wind of Pentecost is here again. That great and mighty rushing wind of life. The increasing measure speaks to the bones and they first come together. Tendons and sinews fast so that it is bone to bone. Is this not fellowship? Is this not union and communion? Adam looked at Eve and immediately recognized her as the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. He called her woman for she had been taken out of a man while he slept. It's good to know that Jesus also slept. From his side, he was pierced on the cross, where water and blood gushed out. And from him, from him came our glorious bride, his church, his beloved, the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. The bones that must be a great army, the army who go out with the rider upon the white horse, who goes forth conquering and to conquer. You see, the increasing measure revises the records of old and settles unfinished business, even where death has tried its hand. And this is restoration. To undo entirely and proceed, not just to revive the dead army, but for it to arise and win the battle it has lost. For them to now stand victoriously in the shadow of the valley of death, I return back to the first sound of life in these bones, tendons and snews, joint to joint, fellowship. Without fellowship, we will not be strong to do, as the increasing measure demands us. So the Lord is commanding us to be strong. And one of the things that is also going to release us strength is fellowship. Fellowship is like the skeleton that supports the entire body together. 
It protects the internal organs from external injury. Fellowship protects and supports. And so these bones must be joined back together, bone to bone first. Shall the bones live again? Will yesterday's army rise and shine again? Will they be restored to their rank and command again? Will they plunder the enemy who sought their lives? Will they be strong to take the territory that is promised to them as their inheritance? Then fellowship is key to their strength. Where bones are joined to bones, flesh can now follow. In other words, where there is fellowship, there is substance. Where there is fellowship, the, promise are, the promises are tangible. Adam lived in fellowship with God in the garden in the cool of the day. And while he was in the fellowship, his authority was tangible. He had dominion over all the earth. Abraham was also blessed to enjoy the fellowship with the Lord. Friendship with Adonai. And you find in Genesis 18, 17, the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Jacob also knew of this fellowship with God through his lifetime. Genesis 32, verse 30. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Moses would speak with God as a man would speak to his friend. It's amazing that God can come and talk to a man. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face. <laughs> face to face. Not through the dream. Not through the whispers. Face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses will return to the camp. But his young age, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Exodus 33, verse 11. Joshua also communed with the Lord as he prepared to conquer Jericho. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as command of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reference and asked him, What, the, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And Jesus also invited his disciples into this friendship, into this fellowship. John 15, 15. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Fellowship brings us to know the business of the father. Fellowship keeps us in our authority as Adam in the garden. Fellowship with God causes our faces to shine like that of Moses, that the priestly blessings was not merely figurative, but also literal, that the Lord would bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon thee and give thee peace. That is the increasing measure. And so the face of Moses shone, and Israel demanded he veil his face for their sake. Genesis 34, verse 29 to 30. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant, law in his hands. He was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant and they were afraid to come near. So fellowship with God 
will make us radiant. Fellowship with the Lord is first and then our fellowship with one another. First we are the bride of Christ, born of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Second, we are the body of Christ, one body with many parts, each needful of the fellowship of the other. The increasing measure will not achieve its task if we are lacking in fellowship. Where, we will, where will we get strength and where will we meet the one who commands our victory? Where will we become reigning and where will we meet with the one who calls us friends? and openly shares with us the affairs of the King of Kings. Where will we find grace to bear up one another, to love one another, to care for one another? Fellowship, tendons to tendons, snews to snews, each humble enough to be joined to the other. Our fellowship with the Lord and the fellowship with one another will be a secret to our strength that we need to successfully carry the increasing measure. Lastly, fellowship always feeds on thanksgiving. Where fellowship is, thanks abound. We are in perpetual thanksgiving. When the Lord shares the mysteries of the kingdom, we give thanks. When he spares the righteous in his judgment of Sodom, Abraham is grateful. When he delivers Jericho into the hands of Joshua with battle strategy, whose weapons were trumpets and tambourines, shouts and rejoicing, then Israel is thankful. Joshua too is abundant with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving nourishes fellowship. We see it also in the life of Jesus, who was in fellowship with the Father. On one instance, there are hungry crowds and all there is to eat is the lunch of a young boy, two fish and five loaves. Yet there are 5,000 men, not counting women and children. You find that in Matthew 14, 16 to 21. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered, bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples, the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up. Two basketfuls, full of broken pieces and one left over. The number of those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. So fellowship and thanksgiving in a increase that feeds multitudes. This is an increasing measure, saints. We must not be lacking in our fellowship. We must remember to be thankful Thanksgiving is the only fitting reciprocity in fellowship. Thanksgiving gives worth back to the one who is worthy. Thanksgiving keeps us in humility that always receives grace for increase. Where the breath of God is, thanksgiving and a praise abound so that everything with breath praises the Lord. The bones of old are bounding in thanksgiving because they are victorious again. The dead bones are singing songs of thanksgiving as, as they do. It's multiplication of victories enough for the multitudes to be blessed and fed. So what are we talking about this morning? We are talking about fellowship and thanksgiving. It will release great strength to us because of the increase and the restoration. Those who sought the fellowship with Jesus, their lives changed. They were able to do 
great things. And today the Lord is desiring again that we come back to the fellowship. He's desiring, he's desiring that his bone will come back to his bone and there will be flesh and there will be life today. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they enjoy their fellowship. In the cool of the day, the Lord will come and fellowship with them. God created man for fellowship. The fellowship was indeed good until disobedience came in. And the fellowship broke. And from that time, the Lord has been seeking for a man that he can fellowship with. And he pursued until he paid again because his bride was taken by the enemy. And the enemy was demanding now a price has, been, has to be paid. And Jesus paid the price and restored his bride back so that there can be continual fellowship so that there could be power again to restore the power again that men can dominate again can multiply again to have the power to multiply again and that's where we are today and um, in the morning Philip was leading us to call on Jesus and um, this morning it's good to know that uh, the church has lost the power because of many things that have happened to the body of Christ and they have broken the fellowship down again. Disobedience is key. Sin is key. So today, the church is weak because there's no fellowship with the Lord. But today the Lord wants to restore. This is one of the things that the Lord is restoring back to us. And he's saying, let the wind come. Prophesy that the wind may come. That there will be restoration of fellowship. That my bone that is dead and broken and detached from me today can come back can come back and together we become a greater army. Fellowship has caused things to disintegrate and therefore the body of Christ cannot function properly, cannot be a strong army again. They are just lying idle, rotting, breaking down Father and Father. But today the Lord is come to restore because unless we are restored, the army of God is restored. There can be no restoration. It's the army that pursues the enemy to bring back that which was stolen. So if the army is in bones and pieces, how can it now chase the enemy and bring back that which needs to be brought back? How can there be now expansion? How can there be increase? But the Lord today has come to restore one thing, the precious thing that was lost. Fellowship. Today he wants to fellowship with someone. Today God the Father wants to fellowship with someone. Today Jesus wants to fellowship with someone. Today the Holy Spirit wants to fellowship with someone. Jesus has come to restore fellowship to the fivefold ministry that it shall be powerful again, that it shall dominate again, that it shall multiply again, that it shall bring increase again. The Holy Spirit has come to release power again. As we continue, 
fellowshipping with him, to restore the gifts, to restore the strength, to restore the revelation, to restore prayer, to restore that which was lost. And today, church, we have come to a good point. We are now born as to come back to his bone. And the Lord will release the flesh. And the Lord will release the breath again. And again we shall rise as a great army. To go advancing, conquering and conquering with him in his fields. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And ye are the branches. Ye are the branches. All of us, the body of Christ, we are the branches joined to the true vine. So we are fellowshipping with the true vine. We are getting nutrients. And also, how many of us know that even the branches, they fellowship up there? Do we know that? And once they fellowship, there is pollination. And when there is pollination, there is fruit. Basically, if fellowship with God and the fellowship with the one another dies, then there will be no fruit. There will be no increase. There will be no restoration. Today, Christians, they feel that they are able by themselves. But you are not able by yourself. You are called a body of Christ. Where you, you could be the heart. I could be the eyelashes. Philip could be the, the, the kidneys. Another one could be the nails. All of us fitted together, we become a great army. So when people detach themselves from a fellowship, they are killing themselves. You can be 100% yourself, complete, self-contained, right? So we need each other. We need each other. Look at these four lepers. They are having fellowship because of one common thing. They are all lepers. But see what happened. They are sitting down fellowshipping. Lepers lacking organs in the body. But they became a great army because of the fellowship. It grew sweeter and sweeter until they came to a point where they are like, okay, man, we can't die here. Can we think of doing something? And together they arose. Four lepers brought food, you know, they brought food to the camp of the Israelites. So where there is fellowship, it doesn't matter whether it's two or three. There will be power released to do the work of God. You stand alone, you are weak, you are attacked alone. We start with the fellowship of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we come to the fellowship with one another. And today, we will repent before God. The things that we have done to break fellowship, the things of the flesh that has interfered with the fellowship of one man and another, so that now you don't nourish me and I don't nourish you because I'm scared of you. Today we are going to break the war partition. We allow the Lord to break the war partition. We know this country is also a country of tribalism. We are going to allow the Lord to break this in the name of Jesus. Those that Elua will nourish a kikuyu. <laughs> and Aluya will nourish a kamba. Hallelujah. Because the war partition must be broken. That's why we cannot become a great nation as we wish. Because the enemy has come to destroy our fellowship with one another. How can we then become a great army? How can we then become a great army? You become the fellowship you keep. If you keep the fellowship of thugs, one of these days you are going to turn to become a thug. If you keep a fellowship of the immoral, then one of these days you start becoming immoral. You become the fellowship you keep. You become the fellowship you keep. If you keep the right fellowship, a 
are the fellowship of the children of God, then there will be power. There will be power that shall be released to us. And we shall pursue together. We shall rest, bring restoration together. We shall build together. We shall increase together. Look at these people in the book of Genesis. <laughs> A few people decided we are going to, the fellowship became sweeter. You know when the fellowship becomes sweeter, it advances to the next level. What can we do now? If this fellowship becomes sweeter, we advance to see what else can we do now. And they came up with an idea, oh, I think we should build a top building we, until it re we, we reach heaven. We can do some exploits. Fellowship is strong. <laughs> when they are united to do the wrong thing, <laughs> huh? they still do, but it's the wrong thing. It has consequences. But when we unite in Jesus' name to do the right thing, there's great force inside there. So they said, you are going to build until you reach heaven. Did they build? Did they? They did. Mortar after stone, huh? brick, until the Lord, you know, I don't know how far they had gone. For God to say, excuse me, I thought these folks were joking. Can we go down and see what they are doing? Fellowship is strength. Fellowship is strength. And then now, fellowship, when you add another spice called thanksgiving, man, it becomes now super. <laughs> Amen. With thanksgiving, the problem why we can't fellowship with one another because even to say thank you, to the one who is sitting next to you. It's so hard. Yeah? Even today, as I'm saying, we want to fellowship with God. The Lord is going to draw nigh to us. There are people when we come close to Jesus, huh? you start telling him about the shoes you don't have, the school fees you don't have, the job you don't have. Is that fellowship? Huh? <laughs> is that fellowship? So today we have to change the way we fellowship with the Lord. Supposing you just come and say, thank you, Lord, because I know I don't have school fees, but I thank you because your hand is mighty. You will provide. It's not a big deal with you. Thank you, Jesus, again. And again, I say thank you. What do you, th what do you think will happen? Huh? What do you think will happen? You'll be so touched. But when we come complaining, huh? when we come complaining, God says, uh uh, angels, can you stop that one who is grumbling out there? Can you find out what they want? <laughs> you are not brought in because you have not a heart of gratitude. A heart of gratitude, they say, determines the altitude, right? The higher you go, the stronger you become. So today, I want us to arise because we can talk many things about fellowship. But I want us to stand and I want us to start repenting this morning and asking the Lord to restore again our fellowship with him. Our fellowship with him. And to restore again our fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the local church. To restore again. The enemy has been good us again. The enemy has lied to us again as he did to Eve. What did he say? Did God say that you will not die? Huh? <laughs> Fellowship works well where there is shared ownership. So, Eve was told what? He was lied. So lies, the deception breaks the union, the fellowship. The serpent, the serpent deceived Eve. When you read Genesis chapter 2. And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. So many of us have been deceived. 
I know how to call God. I know how to pray. I know how to read the word. I know how to prophesy to myself. I know what to do. <laughs> and where was Eve? She was far from the fellowship of the husband. So she chose to fellowship with mm -hmm, someone else who took him far than she thought. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken from. We want to ask the Lord to help us this morning. Lift up your hands. Today the Lord wants to encounter us. Today the wind of God will blow again and bring bone back to bone and bring it and fit it bone back to bone. Today the Lord will restore the flesh of fellowship again. Today the Lord will release life to the fellowship again. Today the Lord will release the attitude of thanksgiving, the attitude of gratitude. He will restore again. He calls us friends, best friends. Another lady came to my office and I asked her, she had many problems, and I'm asking her, why don't you go to church? And she said, two years, I've never, two, three, four years. Why? Because in the church where I was, they gossiped me. But now you are suffering, you have no one you can talk to. Let's repent of the things that have broken down the fellowship. Let's bring repentance. We want this church to be strong in fellowship. Strong in fellowship. Fellowship of this ministry had been destroyed by the enemy. When he comes to us like a great flood, the Lord shall lift us a standard. Today many are in hiding like Adam and Eve. Even when God comes, they are still hiding. They are still running away. They are like, uh uh, we found something we didn't know. We've discovered something. We are naked. And the Lord is asking, Who told you that you're naked? Because of sin today, people are running away from the fellowship of God. They are running away. Ask the Lord to restore your relationship with Him. Remember when you gave your life to Jesus. How you are happy, how you are talking to Jesus. How you are feeling like a child. How you are enjoying the fellowship with the Lord. But as you grew older in salvation, it's coming down, it's dwindling. The fellowship is narrowing down. We want the Lord to restore it 100%. Ask the Lord to forgive you. And if there's any way you contributed to breaking of fellowship in either church, whether it is eternity or wherever church, the body of Christ, bring repentance to the Lord today. We must endeavor to keep the fellowship. We are not the ones to destroy the fellowship.
the root of contention, the root of deception must be broken today. We are continuing to speak with the Lord. This is serious, church. How can we become a greater me if the fellowship is broken down? The apostles continued in fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. They were strong, strong. They continued in the fellowship. To even people to find time to come to a midweek service, fellowship is hard. We ask the Lord to help us today as a church because he's looking at us as a strong army. He wants to bring bone back to bone the restoration of fellowship. Jesus, you are worthy. This morning, before we continue, I would like to pray this salvation prayer again for someone there who has never received Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I repent my sins. I ask that you may forgive me. I ask that you may come in my life. Come in my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Restore back the fellowship of my creator and the creation. Let there be a shaking today. Restore me back to the fellowship with Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my cry and my asking today and answering my asking today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want us to come to the water this morning. The worship team, come. Come. The Lord wants to shake hand with you. Where there's fellowship, the shaking of hand, this agreement, it's the reason why you came early. There are not many people. Come, come in the water.
Abide, 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 abide. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door. And let me come and fellowship with you. And let me abide in your heart as you abide in me. Abide, abide, abide. For so shall your fruit be when you abide. For so is your fruit when you abide. Abide, abide. I stand at the door and knock. Abide, abide. Abide with me, abide. That you may have plenty of fruit. Oh, that your fruit may remain. That your fruit may remain. That your fruit may last. That your fruit may endure. That your fruit shall stand in all seasons. Abide, abide. Abide, abide. I say again, abide. For so shall your fruit be. Oh, if you remain, so shall your fruit be. So shall your fruit remain if you remain. So shall your fruit abide if you abide. Fellowship with me. That you may come to the top of the mountain. And come to the place of saying, show me your face. That you may ask to see my face. That you may ask to see my face. That you may ask that I may show you my glory. That you may ask and that I may show you my glory. That I may let all my goodness pass before you. Abide. Abide with me. Come to the top of the mountain that I may show you my goodness. That I may show you my face. That I may show you my glory. And that you may live and that you may live abide and you shall live abide and you shall be restored abide and you shall be expanded abide and you shall see all my goodness pass before you abide with me so shall you win many to me when you abide with me, abide with me, abide. That I may show you my glory, abide, 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 abide. abide. Abraham, my servant. even in his old age he he produced he waited <laughs> he remained <laughs> in obedience when you abide you must remain in obedience abiding in obedience abiding in obedience not relenting not giving up not going to the left or to the right but remaining in obedience Abiding is in obedience. Abiding is in obedience. Is in obedience. He obeyed. And therefore, Abraham abode. He abode. He abode. And in his abiding, he produced. In his abiding, he produced this obedience. This obedience. This obedience. We produce 
Disobedience we produce it carries in it. By what? It has life, life to produce. It is not empty. You do not obey it. Vain. Zakara Shata Risaka. Because in obedience is by word. You obey by word. You obey by word. And my word has life. Therefore, as you abide, 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 there is life. There is life, and this life is in this obedience. And this life is in this obedience. And in this obedience you shall produce. In this obedience you shall produce. In this obedience you shall produce. You shall produce Zikara Shataria Sokota Labashaka because it shall not return to be empty. It shall not return to be empty. Obedience is a journey. Who sekata you journey with my word in obedience? Shekata Ridosha, you fellowship in my word. Shekata Rasaka. When you fellowship in obedience, you fellowship in my word. You fellowship in my word. You journey with my word. For the moment that I speak it, it is a journey. It goes forth from my word. And it goes and it goes. And she carry the body sad and sad and abandoned. The labari karashata. As it goes, the boshata. Zusari abakata. The bokusa labateka. And you journey. And you journey with it. In obedience. In obedience, you journey with my word. In obedience, you journey with my word. In obedience, you journey with the word. Because it shall accomplish. And therefore, obedience. As my word accomplishes, there you are. In obedience. You shall bear. You shall share. Rakisa, rabakate, reshikata. In obedience, you shall bear. Ora dasika, and it shall return to me. He shall return to me, having accomplished. Therefore, the journey of obedience is the journey of the word. The journey of obedience is the journey of my word. From the moment that I speak it, as it journeys, Zukarabashika, you remain in my word, you remain in obedience. You remain in obedience when you remain in my word. And you remain in my word when you remain in obedience. And we move together because I watch over my word. We move, we move, we move. Rakazi kate, we move. Zikarasha. We move. Rasukata, we move. Zikateria Sokata. Therefore, I watch over you. Zikaria Tokana as I watch over my word. Because obedience joins you to my word. Obedience joins you to my word. And therefore, he shall not fail. Therefore, he shall produce. Therefore, you shall produce. Even at your old age, you shall produce. And what you produce is for the generation. Yes, this word goes to the generations. Your obedience goes all the way to the generations. For the loins of Abraham carry the generations. This is a says in Labakati Rashata. My word as he walked in obedience. And my word as he walked in obedience. This Ali Roshata Rabakas Oshika Rabakato Robakusa Labakate spoke upon the generations. This Arabaka. Robakana trickle all the way to the generations. These are Rabakato Robashaka and has continued to accomplish. Has continued to accomplish. As you fellowship, as we fellowship in obedience, as you fellowship, this word, this word, it becomes a part of you. We become one. We become one because I am in my word and my word is me. I am in my word and my word is me. We are one. We are one. We are one. We are one. In this journey, we are one. We are one. You carry, you carry this oneness. You carry this unity. You carry the word. You carry the word in you and carry the word in you and you journey with the word as I watch over the word and we complete and we accomplish and we deliver and we do great and mighty things together. Zeseli satare zita le mosika le nesika na shata. Therefore obey. Therefore obey. Obedience. Rikara shata le sukota. Obedience. Obedience. Bless the name of God. Shall we stand together in Jesus name? Whatever you are, just stand. Stand before the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is gracious. He's faithful. In the beginning, I made you.
receive it. And I said, let us make man. Jesus. I was in the fellowship of myself Glory to the with the Father, Lord. with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. We worship your Lord. And every day I came to you Blessed be your name of God. that we may continue this. Is it Bless not prophesied that in the end that there will be no tabernacle because I will be in your midst when all is taken away, when I have accomplished my work here on earth? And I take Jesus. you to myself. From beginning to the end, my intention and my desire is to fellowship with you. Glory to I God. made you in my image and in my likeness Bless your name that you may fellowship with one another. Glory but without me, the fellowship is not complete. Without me, it is not complete. Thus I said, let us for we were in our fellowship. And every day we came to you, O oh man, and fellowshiped with you. That you may name, that you may deal, that you may do the very thing I called you to do. But thus I saw you were alone. And I made you one that you may fellowship with. For this is my desire. That men fellowship with one another, with me in the cool of the day, that you may do the very thing I called you to do. Glory to God. Without this fellowship, you will not accomplish. You will not accomplish. Worship your name. You will not accomplish. Bless the name of You pray, our Father who art in heaven. Worship your name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. You pray for fellowship with the Father. You pray for fellowship with the kingdom. Therefore, therefore, this day, as Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego together with Daniel fellowshiped in Babylon, thus will you fellowship in Karen. Thus will you fellowship in the nations. I command it, it is so the name of Jesus. I spoke to you and, and I said, name of Jesus. where two are gathered in my name, there yes. I am found. Why? For in the fellowship of men with God, there is power. Bless your name of God. I have spoken and I said obey and I speak again and I said obey. Jesus. Therefore to every power in heaven Jesus. or nothing underneath, Jesus. today you will obey. Jesus. Today you will obey Glory that there is no other fellowship higher than the fellowship between man and God. Between God and man. Thus I have spoken. The mighty name Thus it is so. Name Take heed. Bless. For I am strong. Mighty and I am here to fulfill every word I have spoken. Name of Jesus. In the heavens, in the earth and underneath. Glorify. I, the Lord, your God, have commanded no greater fellowship name of Jesus. than between man you worship and the Lord. God that made them. You worship your name. Lift your hands. Lift your hand before the Lord. Just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Talk to God. Say, the Lord, I desire your fellowship. I desire to walk with you. God desires to have fellowship with you. And you desires you to have fellowship with each other. Hallelujah. As you are before the Lord, there are so many believers that have broken the fellowship with each other. They have broken fellowship even with their church. And the enemy has used you to break fellowship. When you break fellowship, you break the power of God. This morning, I just want you where you are. As we sing this song, allow God to use you to be able to be a fellowship builder that shall build each other in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
Hand is Rashasnev.